Hello and welcome to the final part of our stay at home cushion crochet along. Um, I hope you've got all your stripes, all your gorgeous rows of lovely stitches uh, made and enjoyed playing with the colours. Um, if you haven't already done so, then darn in your ends with a bodkin, a needle with a blunt end and a large eye, um, and just weave them in so that you can't see them. Weave them into um, some stitches of the same colour uh, and then you can safely trim them off. Um, so we're going to talk about putting the cushion together and, um, and backing it. Now I like to use um, a jumper, a woolen jumper for backing cushions because um, it sort of adds to that nice snuggly feeling. Um, you could also use um, fabric or some fleece. Um, you could crochet a back for the cushion. You could pick one of the stitches um, and make the whole back in, in, in a, a particular stitch um, or do another patterned back. Um, I think the granny stripe would make a nice back um, for a cushion. Um, I really like the little uh, bean stitch, that's quite a nice one. I'm, I'm planning a blanket out of that because it's quite, quite nice and textured, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I like a woolly jumper. Uh, so what you do is um, you, <laughs> you steal someone else's jumper because it's the colour that you want for the back of your cushion um, and you put it in on a hot wash um, with washing powder the same as usual um, and then something that's going to be heavy to bang the fibres so something like the bath mat or trainers some pairs of jeans um, and you put it in on a hot wash and what happens is the action of the soap um, with the heat and the uh, and the friction from the heavy items um, will bind the woolen fabrics together, um, felting the uh, felting the fabric. So when you cut it, you can see it's not. I've cut across that nice kind of ribbing design, um, and it's not unraveling. Um, so I think that makes a really good back um, for a cushion. Now, what I like to do is um, an envelope back. Um, and I want it to be two thirds the size of my finished front so that I get a good overlap so that the uh, inner, the cushion inner, isn't sort of peeping out through a gap, which always looks a bit skimpy. Um, so I've cut these two pieces. See, that one is two thirds of the size of the front um, and the other half of the envelope back, that's the same. Um, so then I wanted to decorate the edge. So um, I've written um, and updated on the website so you can have a look at how to do it. Um, what I've done though is I've gone down to a three and a half millimeter, uh, no, a three millimeter hook um, because it's quite thin and quite pointy. So it will just quite easily slide into the, if I go to the other end here, slide in between the fibers um, of the jumper. So you can work along. Um, so first of all you want to attach your wool. Um, I'll show you on that edge. Let's find an end. My ball is falling apart. So attach your wool in the same way that we have before. So push it through, put the loop onto the back of your hook, pull it through to the front and yarn over and pull it through and there you go you're attached now you'll notice look I have left um, a centimeter from the edge so I'm not going right up to the edge because we need to leave a seam allowance because we're going to stitch around the two backs joining them to the front um, and then you work a row of double crochet all the way across and just space them out um, so push it through yarn over bring it back to the right side you've got two loops on your hook yarn over pull it through both and then about the same distance away push your crochet hook through yarn over bring it through two loops on your hook yarn over and pull it through both and you carry on like that all the way across finishing one centimeter before the other side of your um, of your back um, and then you'll have a nice even row of double crochets if I hold that one up uh, a row of double crochets evenly spaced um, across the raw edge of your cushion back. Now um, if you're finding it tricky to push the hook through you could stitch blanket stitch across instead. Really what this first row is designed to do um, is to give an attachment point for the second row of stitches and the second row of stitches are um, for making our buttonholes. 
So once you've done your first row of double crochets all the way across um, from one side to the other, you can fasten off, darn in yet another end, um, and then you want to um, make your second row. So on the second row, you're going to chain one and make a double crochet into the first stitch. Where have I put my... Buried the hook under there. There it is. So this is our this is our row one. So you're attaching your... There we go. So attach your... your yours will be attached uh, rather because you've not cut yours off. So row two. Chain one and make a double crochet underneath both parts of the edge of that stitch from the first row. Now, what you're going to do is evenly space three buttonholes. If I use a pin, I can show you where they are on this one. So, one, two, Okay, those are the three buttonholes where, can you see, there's a little bit of chain. So what you're going to do is work double crochets into the top of your stitches from the first row. So insert your hook, yarn over, bring it through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull it through both. So you make one double crochet in each stitch up to the point of the first buttonhole. Then you chain four, which will give you that little bit of loop there that you can get your button under. And then you skip two stitches. I don't know whether you'll be able to pick that up on the, um, on the screen. So there's my chain of four. And then under here, there's one, two stitches that I've missed. And that's making them the little buttonhole. Then you continue making double crochets um, into the stitches from the first row until you get to the point where you want your second buttonhole and then you do the same thing again. You chain four and you skip two stitches and you continue doing that. I mean, if you wanted to, you could put more buttonholes. Um, I just decided I'd do three, but you can do as many as you want. So it's a double crochet. When you come to the buttonhole, you chain four, you skip two stitches and then you continue along okay um, and then we just need to put it together once you've worked your buttonhole row so what you do is you oops now for your second so that's one half of the back it's got uh, a row of double crochet and then a row making the buttonholes um, so that will go there we go. And then my second piece of the back, tangle that wool. I just did a row of double crochets along. Now you won't actually see it, um, but it's quite nice just to finish it off um, rather than leaving a raw edge. Equally, you could blanket stitch along it, zigzag with your sewing machine, um, but I just put a little bit of that nice yellow um, and did a row across there. So now we want our. Um, so we line up with the outside edge, so it's the same width as the cushion front, like that. And then there's the other one, so it's right side down for both of your pieces of envelope back. Um, and then pop some pins in around the edge to hold it in place. There we go. And then down the side, let's just move that so it's straight. So lining up those two edges, and there, can you see there's my seam allowance where I haven't worked the stitches, because um, that's where I'm going to be actually stitching it to the, there we go, to the cushion front. So you pin all the way around, and then you stitch all the way around, um, either by hand or with your sewing machine, and that will join it together. Once you've done that, the last thing to do is to attach your buttons, which is always a, oh, actually that one looks quite nice, always a nice job. So you want one that's a suitable size for the buttonholes that you've made um, and that will go nicely with the colours that you've chosen for the front. So mine are very much those kind of springtime 
colours. Um, so I might go with the green, the yellow, the blue. It's quite a nice lilac one as well. Um, you won't be surprised to know I've got plenty of buttons uh, to choose from. Hopefully you'll have a few um, that will go with the colours that you've chosen for your cushion. So this is quite a, um, a quick and easy way of making a back uh, for a cushion. If you've got problems with it, then, then do message me. Um, the other thing I'm looking at now is for our leftover scraps. Um, I've got an idea of something else that we can make uh, with those as well. Um, and I'll give you more details on that uh, probably next week. Okay, bye.